Hello, well, in the last video we introduced this problem uh, where in general, uh, if we have a data set, we probably have more rows than columns. That's not always true, but it often is. And that presented a problem because when we're trying to solve for some weights on some variables, then every time we have a new row or a new observation, uh, we get an equation. And pretty soon we have too many equations and not enough variables. And, uh, and so it's often not possible uh, to solve the system, right? Sometimes it might be, right? As long as all of the uh, equations we're getting are consistent with each other in some way. Um, but, but that's generally not going to be true, right? There's noise in the system. And we even saw one example last time where we filled the same fruit basket twice and got different values or, or kind of prices for it. Um, so what we want to do, right, since we can't solve the system of equations in general, is we want to solve a similar problem that there is a solution for. And um, we saw last time that this notion of, oh, there's not a solution to the system of equations is equivalent to saying um, that uh, a the vector that we're trying to um, kind of invert uh, is not in the column space, okay? So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to get a, a vector that is in the column space. And we can do that with a very special matrix that I'm introducing here. Uh, this is an example of a projection matrix. Um, you can see that this projection matrix B is based on our, our matrix A, which contains all our data. Um, now I'm not going to get into where this equation uh, came from, and it's even using things we haven't really talked about. For example, it's taking the inverse of a matrix, right? It's doing other things that we haven't talked about, like multiplying one matrix by another. Um, so I'm not trying to talk about where it came from, but I'm going to just use uh, NumPy to calculate it, and what will be interesting is how we can use it. So this is a projection matrix, and what's cool about it is that um, you can use it to multiply, well, you, you multiply P by a vector, and when you do that, you get another vector back of the same, same size. And what's neat is that the vector you get back is guaranteed to be in the column space of A. Okay, so if if this vector we were doing back, we could imagine it could be prices, and it, you could might say, okay, well, this is a set of prices that, if these were the prices, then we could solve the system of equations. Okay, well, it's easy to be in the column space of A. Um, you know what's always in the column space of every matrix? A vector of all zeros, right? So that in and of itself is not cool. Uh, what's cool is that it's not only in the column space of A, but uh, this output is maybe as close as to the input as possible, right? So it's kind of like, when I multiply p by a vector, I imagine that I'm feeding in a vector and getting a, a new vector back out. And that vector I'm getting back out is very similar to the input, at least as, as similar as it uh, can you know, possibly be. Okay, so how are we gonna use this in general? Well, often we're gonna to wanna to solve something like this, ax equals b, and there will be no solution. So what we'll do is we'll multiply, oh, let me fix this, apologies. We're going to multiply B by P, matrix P, and so we're going to get the vector P, right, the little case P. And then we're going to solve this, right? There's guaranteed to be a solution for that, right? Because P is in the column space of A because, well, that's what projection matrices give us. Let's go back to this example from last time where we had our fruit baskets. And, um, and what really got us last time was this last fruit basket we sold, right? Because these last two fruit baskets looked identical, right? So we kind of get the same left-hand sides of the equations, uh, but we have different right-hand sides, right? So how can an equation based on this equal eight and then the same value equal 8.5? It's, it's not possible, right? This is clearly uh, clearly noise, right? So this B is what I want to multiply by the projection matrix to get something I can solve, right? It's not okay that the last two prices are, are different. So here's that equation again for the projection matrix. I'm gonna write the code for that. So, so all of these things, right? When I put one matrix next to another, that means I'm doing the transpose. So it's A, a dot product, and then uh, something in here, right? It's this piece. Uh, I see I'm doing a matrix inversion, and we haven't really talked about that, but I'm just going to call a function for it that's in linear algebra dot uh, invert. And um, well, what am I inverting? I'm inverting 
a transpose times a, a transpose dot product. A, again, we haven't really talked about what it means to multiply one matrix by another, but we're just kind of faithfully implementing that equation. All right, so I've done all of these parts so far. Um, and, uh, and let me do this last part. Very, very important formula, but um, you know, we aren't gonna derive it in this class or really justify it. Um, that would be if this were a linear algebra class, maybe you might, might derive that. Uh, so a dot t, and, and that all gives me back this matrix, t, this giant matrix. And once I have this, what can I do? I can say p dot b, and that gives me a vector back. And let's take a look at that. And, um, and, 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 and I guess, what, what is my problem here? Um, the shapes are not aligned. Let me let me just take a look at what my shapes are. So the shape of that is a five by five, and that one is a ten by one. That's kind of strange. You know what, I, I bet I had that from earlier and I kind of forgot to rerun this cell. Let me just run this quickly. My apologies. I should have done a kernel and restart and run all before I started this demo. Okay, so now it actually works out and I get this new a vector. Now, it's certainly not clear by just looking at that 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 is in the column space of A. But what I do want you to notice is that it solved that problem we had last time, right? Now we're dealing with something where these two baskets have the same price, right? So that's one thing I want you to notice about this. And then the other cool thing, right? I wonder if I can, maybe let me just do this so we can fit them both. You notice that P, the P matrix here, is pretty close to the B matrix, right? You know, instead of seven, it's 7.04, right? So that's as far as I'll go with this. I mean, uh, we're guaranteed just, by the underlying math, that this is the closest possible vector to this that is in the column space of A. And because it's in the column space of A, we know there is a solution for this. Right? So the logical next step, which I'm not going to do here at least, next step, not done today, is solve for x, right? Where we have A, what do we have? We have A times x equals, well, not B. That's what we really wanted to solve, but there is no solution. P is pretty close to B, and there is a solution for that. So that'd be logical next step. And then X would give us those um, coefficients that we really, really wanted. Okay, let me do another example that um, where I actually will kind of uh, do something visually. Uh, this one's a little bit hard to visualize because there's these three columns. Um, but I'm actually going to do, what am I going to do here? I'm going to create this data frame that looks like this. Maybe I'll go back to um, how I created it after I show it to you. Um, but we're basically trying to figure out well, what is the relationship between B and um, A, right? So I'm going to be pulling out B to a separate piece. And then I'm going to have um, a matrix A that only has this one column in it. So how did I get this? Well, I was sampling from the normal distribution to get a bunch of A values. Uh, the mean was 20. Um, standard deviation five, I got 10 values. Um, then I generated some noise. The noise was centered at zero, standard deviation one, 10 values. And then the relationship here is, is mostly supposed to be B is half of A, uh, but I'm adding in that noise, right? So I do that, I get some noisy B value here. And so I put in the data frame and I plot it. And I see this kind of thing, right? There's this, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a clean linear pattern, right? Um, it's roughly linear, right? Maybe I could imagine fitting some line to it, but it's not exactly linear. And um, and something to note here, right, is that that whole if I, if I go back to one of these, right, anytime I have um one of these b vectors, right, I can I can plot a vector as a scatter, right, because uh because a, a vector is just a column. We've been plotting columns as scatters, right? So I can do that um as well. So what I'm going to do. To really show you the meaning behind that projection matrix and the 
and the vectors that gives us back is that I'm going to compute a new column uh, for this matrix, right? And the new column is going to be called P, and it's going to be based on the projection matrix. I'm going to show you what that one looks like when we when we visualize that. Okay, so let's do that. So uh, here I have my data frame, and um, let me get the underlying uh, the underlying values. What are these? Well, this is the uh, NumPy array, and let me slice that. I want all the rows, and I want everything except that uh, that column, right? So let me let me run that, and I see. Okay, well that's my A matrix. Okay, and then let me get those B values, right? So my Bs, well, I guess will be the other piece. It's kind of strange, right? Because my matrix only has one column, so it looks like a vector, right? But let me look at that, and there's my Bs. Just out of convention, I'm capitalizing this, uh, but not the B. And, um, and now I want to figure out what that projection matrix is based on A, just so I can multiply B by it and get something in this space. Let me, let me head back and grab my... Um, equation from before, right? So I'm going to grab that thing and compute my special projection matrix. And let's take a look at that. And um, let me see. I, I thought it was going to be bigger because I thought I had 10 values. Are there 10 values there? That seems not, not right. So I had A there. There I go. I don't know what happened there, but now I'm actually getting 10 values, which I should, it should be a 10 by 10 matrix. Anyway, and so now I'm going to get this P column, which is going to be P dot B. I take a look at that, and I have these new values, which I can add if I want to my data frame. I can say data frame of P equals that, and I can look at it, and uh, cool, there I see it is. Let me, right, so P, right, is a vector, right, it's this column, and um, and it's close to B, and it's in the column space of A. Okay, let me show you what that looks like when I actually want to plot this now. I head back here, and um, and what am I going to do? I'm going to, I should maybe shorten this up a bit. Um, I am going to plot B again, right? B over A. Now let me let me plot these. I don't know. Um, you know, this first time I didn't pass in AX, so that means it creates a new one, and so it creates a new one and it returns it to AX. On um, the second time, I don't want to create a new one. Uh, I want to use the existing one. So this AX goes into the AX parameter of the scatter function, right? And I guess I'll make it red this time, and um, Oh, what happened there? And and you know what happened is uh, is I drew the same sequence twice. So this is the projected values, and and you see that they're all on this nice straight line, which means that I could solve for what the slope of that line is. That line is a coefficient, and I could solve for the for the slope and the intercept. Okay, so we're going to be doing this more uh, next time. We haven't actually solved for that equation. Hopefully, you can see though that. These projection matrix matrices are pretty um, special. They make the problem solvable. Um, hopefully you can see that even though we haven't solved it yet.